Hi. We're back. Again, day seven. Day seven. Seven. We're like in the middle of a halfway point. Yep. Because yep. 13, one of the tricky odd numbers. Very exciting. So today we watched The Gate. We watched The Gate. Which, um, it's a fun kind of, it's, it's another one of those gateway horror films. Yeah. Yeah. Although there was some fucked up shit in it. There was some really fucked up shit in it. And this, this movie was obviously directed, like the, the target audience was kids. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily little kids, but it mostly stars young kids. Like 13. Well, like the big sister was 15. She so, was about to turn 16. So he's probably like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, the, the the main characters in this movie are like super young and well general plot is they accidentally open up a portal to hell and the elder gods are coming back mm-hmm. and so they have to stop that obviously that's the goal mm-hmm. is to not have the elder gods come back um <clears throat> That's the movie. Yeah. Um, things happen in the movie, but there was one point, it was an hour into the movie. It's an hour and a half long. It's your standard movie runtime. Um, we were an hour into the movie and we thought it was over. Yeah. And we were like, oh, not a whole lot happened in this movie. So, like, really, the first hour could have been a self-contained story, and mm-hmm. it would have made an interesting episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Uh, it would have made a really dark episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> but, yeah, like, it could have been trimmed down from there into, like, a TV show episode. Yeah. Um, but the last half hour, a bunch of shit happens. Yeah, last half hour, a bunch of shit happens. Yeah. Um, so, typical parents... Go out of town mm. for a couple days. The older sister, who's like, she's she's not sixteen yet. Almost. Yeah, she 16. says like it's like two weeks before her sixteenth yeah. birthday. Yeah. Um. So she's like, "Don't worry, mom and dad. I can take care of the house. I won't have a party." So they immediately have a party. Yep. So they immediately have a party, and there's this dude that's kind of like her love interest, but they don't really get into it. He's just there. It it seems more like. Her friends were trying to set her up with him, Mm -hmm. and he was interested, and she was, like, not really feeling it. Um, But she's 15, so I guess she was just kind of rolling with it. Peer pressure. Yeah. Because, like, there was one part during the party where he, like, puts his arm around her and, like, pulls her closer, Mm -hmm. and she looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, she's like, oh, I guess this is happening. Yeah, this is the thing that's, that's going on right now. But, like, she did not seem into it. Because if she was, she would have been like, oh. Yeah. But she is like the best older sister, I think, in any movie ever. Yeah. Um, like, her friends distract her a little bit, but she realizes that she should be paying more attention to her little brother. So at one point, she ends up coming home early from hanging out with her friends, and she's like, oh, I'm not going to the beach anymore because I spent all my money. And you're like, the kid's looking in the bags and you're like, oh, she fucking blew it at Victoria's Secret or some shit. But she bought him a bottle rocket because she promised that he she would watch him while they set off bottle rockets after he almost burnt their house down. Yeah, he burned a hole in the roof. And after that, Dad was like, you can still set off model rockets, but not unattended. Yeah. Um. So like the sister was supposed to supervise him doing it. Um, but she was blowing him off to go hang out with her friends. And then his best friend is this weird mix of, like, punk rock outcast and nerdy outcast. Yeah. He's, like, <laughs> he's like a maybe, maybe 12-year-old, like, metalhead kid mm-hmm. with a studded... Is it black denim or is it leather? His it's, jacket. I think it was black denim. It's a studded black denim jacket. And then he also had the denim vest that was a denim jacket with the uh-huh. sleeves pulled off but then he's also got like the glasses and the kind of nerdy hairdo and he's a ginger and, and he's a ginger kid <laughs> and he's got like the weird interest in like geology mm-hmm. and rocks and stuff um 
and the the main character kid the little brother he's super duper into his model rockets Mm -hmm. like that's his thing he's into model rockets and so that i think is another reason why the sister felt so bad for blowing him off because he has like one friend yeah he's got a friend and he really misses hanging out with his sister yeah and she's not quite old enough for her to like not feel bad anymore about blowing him off right yeah (laughs) Well, and I mean, by the time she's old enough to not feel that bad about it, he'll be old enough that he probably doesn't really want to hang out with his sister all the time. Yeah, but it's weird because it opens up with him in a dream. He's Mm -hmm. dreaming that he's in his treehouse that gets struck by lightning and falls over. And then he wakes up. And And they're cutting the tree down. And they're cutting the tree down because it had fallen over. They didn't explain why they were doing no, that. No, they didn't. Like, they didn't say, like, oh, yeah, the tree got struck by lightning last night. And they didn't say, like, this is a thing that we had been planning was to get rid of this tree in our yard. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, yeah, they, like, uprooted the whole tree. Like, they got out the root system and everything. Yeah. Um, and they cut it up and hauled it away. But for some reason, they left the wood from the treehouse that was in it sitting in the yard. Yeah. Well, Which is weird. As they're digging up the tree, they find this geo. The kids find it. Yeah. And so, and so his friend, who's really into rocks, is like, "Oh, we got to dig deeper." And then it just opens up into like a sinkhole. Yeah, there's like this gigantic like cavern underneath. And um, which you'd think they would have noticed when they were digging up the tree's roots. Yeah. But they didn't. No. Um. They did, and they were able to somehow just cover it with dirt and then like roll sod over it. Mm-hmm. Um, my. One of my favorite things from the beginning of the movie is the nerdy friend is, like... Like, he's helping the kid dig the hole back up because, like, they filled it in before he told the nerdy friend about it. And he's like, what are these things called again? And the nerdy friend's like, geodes. We got it. Like, you really should have called me before they filled it back in. And then he's like, we need to dig dig down because there's got to be more down there because apparently geodes occur in clumps. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they do. Um, and he's like, you know how much you can get for a big one? A hundred dollars. <laughs> We're going to be rich. <laughs> I'm like, okay, look. That's kid. a lot for a kid. It is a lot for a kid, but it was the late 80s. So the money went farther back then, but not that much farther. <laughs> We're talking, even if it was double, two hundred dollars. <laughs> And that's why I made the joke. I was like, I'm going to trade this for a Nintendo. (laughs) But neither of these kids are into video games. No. They are into heavy metal music and geology and model rockets. Yeah. Well, um, so they, so weird things start happening after they big up, they dig up the big geode and they crack it open Mm -hmm. and it's like blowing and there's smoke and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then weird things start happening. So the the nerdy friend goes home and he's they set up him up as a very troubled youth. His his mom died and mm-hmm. his friends are away. And this is that's all explained by or, yeah, his the dad's kid's away, dad. not his friend. Yeah, like I guess they had to have some way to introduce this information cuz it's not like the friend is going to be like, "Oh, my mom died like a year ago." Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, because that's part of the weird stuff that happened before he went home. Hmm. The dog dies in this, by the way. What was part of the, the weird The nerdy stuff? kid has a vision of his mom oh, yeah. coming into the house, his friend's house where he was staying. And so then he's like, oh, my gosh, mom. She's like, I love you. I miss you. I need to, ha- I need to hold you. And so he hugs her, and then everything snaps back to reality, and he's holding their dog who's dead. Yeah, the dog's dead. Like, the dog wasn't dead previously. No. The dog is dead now, though. Yeah. Um, so this kid's all fucked up now. Yeah. And he goes home, and he's listening to... That's, like, the first really fucked up thing yeah. that happens in the movie, where you're like, this is for kids? Yeah, and then he goes, he goes back to his house, and he's listening to metal music, and he's like, oh, man, I know, I we summoned demons, because he listens to this album that includes the was it the black book, the dark book, the dark book, it's the dark book, which talks about summoning demons. Yeah, he says they write their own songs, but they get their lyrics from this thing. It's called the dark book, and they like reprinted it in their album note in their album, like in a booklet in the album. Um, 
And like it, it does show similarities between what's going on there mm-hmm. in in the dark book, and and like what's in the dark book. It yeah. Shows like similarities. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like Donnie Darko. <laughs> so so they have this book Similar. and they get an incantation and they go to get rid of the demons and close the hole up and they think uh-huh. that they did it. So at yeah, because like you can see like smoke going into yeah, the, the hole. Yeah, the smoke goes stuff. into the hole and it's sealed up. And he's like, "Yeah, we did it." And so at that point, we we're like, "Oh, okay, like some weird shit happened, but yeah. it you could end it here." Yeah, well, and like we didn't mention, but after they dig up the bigger geode and um, find the giant hole, like the dad comes home and he's like, you need to fill that in. Yeah. And he does. And then like the next day, yeah, it's back and he's like, Oh shit. Yeah. But it's not actually closed. It's not closed. It was actually, it was just temporarily closed. It was pretending to be closed. Because the, the, one of the guy friends of the older sister, they asked him to take care of the dog's body. Cause this whole movie, she's refusing to call her parents cause she wants to make it look like she has everything under control. Right. And so when the dog died, she was like, okay, can you get rid of, can you take him to the vet to get rid of him? And the vet's closed. Mm -hmm. So he goes, brings the dog back to their house and then no one's home because, because every, everybody's out or at the other friend's house. And so he sees this hole in the yard and throws the dog down there. And all while this is going on, we're reading about the dark book. And finding out that because there hadn't been a, a sufficient sacrifice made, the demons couldn't come out to capture their vict- their human right. hosts. Like, well, they couldn't actually bring back, like, the old gods. Yeah. Until they had performed the But there is something that can come out. The little tiny guys. They came out after the dog was put in the hole. Well, y- yeah. Yeah, like, like hmm. they ca- they came for their human hosts, so they could, so the old gods could come back. Right, yeah. right. So the dog was enough, because they even like the nerdy kid even says like it doesn't have to be a human sacrifice to start this off. It could be an animal, mm-hmm. and they're like, um, and you're like the dog's gonna get in the hole. He's putting the dog in the hole. Mm-hmm. Shit's gonna go down. So the dumbass boyfriend puts the dog in the hole. Um, which is a dick move. Yeah. You're supposed to be getting rid of your, is it, is it the guy that is interested in the sister or is it like one of the other girls? It's one of the other girls. Okay. But you're supposed to be like getting rid of this dog's body. It's their pet. It's the remains of their pet. And you're like, I'll just chuck it in this hole in their backyard. Yeah. And it doesn't like fill it in afterwards either, which I mean, obviously wouldn't have worked if he tried, but just tosses it down there. Yeah. And then we find out that the portal isn't closed and the demon set the dark book on fire so they don't have the incantation to reverse it. Mm-hmm. So they tried reading the Bible to the demons, which just made them more pissed off. Yeah, it pisses me off when people do that. And too, the ner- so. and like the ginger kid fell in the hole yeah. and you thought and they ended up pulling him out using they made like a swing. Yeah, they had, like, a plank of wood with rope coming off of either end, and they tossed it down to him. And they, like, lifted him out. They lifted him out, and the whole, like, did it close up at that point? Yeah, because they checked the Bible in, and it It, closed up, so they, like, they thought that everything was okay. Yeah, and that's when we thought it was going to be over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so Casey was like, how much time is left in this movie? Is it over? And I'm like, I think it is. And you went, not much happened in this movie. Yeah. And then I checked the the remaining runtime on it, and there was like half an hour left. So we're like, that didn't work. It didn't work. Nope, totally didn't work. (laughs) Yep. And then the the creatures that pop out are these, like, they're probably only about this big. Yeah. They're like eight inches tall. Yeah. And they... They look awesome. They Yeah. They're really, really well done. For a low-budget horror movie for kids from the late 80s, they used every trick in the book mm-hmm. to make these things look good. And they did stop-motion animation. They did puppets. They did... Um, scale shots where they had like when they're trying to to grab the nerdy kid's Mm -hmm. leg and pull him back into the hole when Mm -hmm. the other kids are dragging him out um 
it looked like it was people in costumes yeah. with like a gigantic model of this kid's leg, which looked good. Mm-hmm. It it was amazing how good the little creatures looked in this movie. Yeah. It was, they were scary. Yeah. They looked they like they creepy. could fuck you up. Yeah. I was really impressed. Mm-hmm. And did I mention puppets? They had puppets. Yeah. The puppets didn't work quite as well, but there no. were certain shots that, that they needed to use puppets yeah. for. Um, and then I was going to say the other really fucked up thing was the kids, um, the brother and the sister, there's a knock at the door. Mm-hmm. And there, it looks like their parents are home. So the little boy is like, Dad, Dad, you're home, you're home, because all this crazy shit's been happening so far. Yeah. And so he goes to give him a hug, and his dad starts choking him. So he starts fighting back, and he presses him in the eyes, and his eyes start just like goo and like pussy and like his goo. His face melts. And then his, and... Fa- and his head falls off and splatters on the ground, and it his was... mom's laughing the whole time. Oh, it was horrific. I loved it. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. There were there were a lot of moments in this movie that really, really worked. Mm-hmm. They, 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 I've said it before about other movies, but they did a lot with what they had. Mm-hmm. And they did, they did well. Um, I'll say, and then, um, the, the best, the nerdy best friend and the sister end up getting taken by these little demons that because they needed two human sacrifices to bring back the elder gods yeah so they stole them and at one point the kid's looking for a gun to shoot shoot these little minion dudes and his best friends all like like kind of like zombied out and he's hiding in the closet and like (laughs) Like, bites them on the hand (laughs) and he's like and it's funny that's not a moment that worked no and it was funny funny because after because he's just like "Eh." Yeah. yeah, and they clearly installed like fake teeth. Yeah, because his fr- his two front teeth, his incisors, were like longer than they should have been. <laughs> so he looked a little bit rodent like. Yeah, but he's not like digging them into his flesh or anything. It's just like laying on top of. Well, it's like coming like this, but it's like so the teeth are just like laying. And, <laughs> he's just like, mm. Mm. <laughs> and he's just like looking at him the whole time too. So it, oh, I don't know. It's... Like the sister pulls him off, and he's just like, "Ow, that really hurt." That was weird and awkward and not scary, really. Yeah. Um, I almost didn't recognize the kid either because you always see him with his glasses on in the movie. Yeah. And in that scene, he doesn't have his glasses on. Mm-hmm. So he looks really different. And it, like, it's not, it's not like a character in a TV show mm-hmm. that you really get attuned to what they look like because you spend a lot of time looking at them. Yeah. This is an hour and a half long movie. We don't know this character well enough to recognize him without his glasses. <laughs> no. So, um, so this kid's like really fucking upset and scared at this point. And there's like, there's like smoke like coming out of the portal to hell. And he's like, oh, because they got their two sacrifices. So now the old gods can come back. So he's yelling at the sky basically yeah and he's like he's like give them back take me instead which i don't know why people ever try to make that deal because why would they no they would have just taken you if they wanted you right um Um, well and like they've got two yeah give me back those two and you can have me yeah that's a bad deal all around bad deal um so after that happens the, the little men end up like morphing into a mega monster which i'm i think was supposed to represent one of the old gods yeah it was one of the elder gods i think yeah but it was it was it was weird cuz he well like there's a hell hole in their living room at this point like the floor yeah. opened up yeah and this thing's like coming out of it yeah and uh it like it like grabs him like like it's gonna kill him mm-hmm. and then it doesn't it just puts its hand on his head and then it takes its hand away and seems to like just kind of forget about it was like him. an affectionate moment it was weird mm-hmm. um but then he looks at his hand he looks at his i think it was his left hand and it's got a fucking eyeball in it that's like looking around and that was a cool effect too yeah that was cool um so it, like, did something to him, but that's never addressed, nor does it come back up any any time later in the movie. No, because at this point, he's 
trying to figure out how to kill this thing. And he's just about to do it because it doesn't take long. No, no. And then he goes and he he finds this big rocket, this big model rocket that his parents hid from him after he almost burnt the house down. Yep. And then he's trying it's gigantic. to he's trying to light it with a match and it's getting blown out because there's wind all over the freaking house. Because the window's broken. Because the window's broken. And then he remembers that. His sister had given him for his birthday a uh, electronic mm. rocket launcher starter button thing. Mm. So he hooks that up and then he launches it into the big monster. And I didn't even really think about it because when he was trying to light matches, I'm like, who the fuck lights off a model rocket with matches? You get a, an ignition thing, mm. an ign- ignition system and you rig it up and... That way you can ignite all of the different rockets at the same time. Well, all of the uh, the propellant mm-hmm. tubes at the same time. Um, and then he actually does that, and I didn't think back to, oh, I was just bitching about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and this was probably the worst effect with the monsters, because the rocket, like, flies into the monster's chest, and it's just, like, a flap that opens there's, up. There's, like, a flap <laughs> in the suit. And it just goes into that. But the monster's like, what the fuck, bro? Like, it has the look on its face yeah. like, what the fuck, bro? When the yeah. rocket goes into it. It's like, it. I thought we were cool, man. Yeah. And at that point, it gra- like grabs him by the foot and it's just like whipping him all around. I'm <laughs> like, that kid's dead. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's dead, dead. now. <laughs> and then, but he's not. So then he drops him because he starts to like explode and the kid runs out of the house. <laughs> And as he's getting to the door, the monster explodes. Uh-huh. And it said, like, the kid's, like, is, like, blown away by the explosion, but he, like, flips yeah. away, like, a yes. flat Oh, panel. my God. After after that happens, everything's cool. Yeah, the I was going to say, the dog's not dead anymore. Like, everyone comes out of the closet, like, yeah, what the hell the happened? Well, I don't know why they're all in the closet. I don't know why they're in the closet. Speaking of being in a closet, though... No, I'm not about to come out right now. The there's a a part where when they were oh, first yeah. like reading the Bible to the to the hole in the ground, um, after they think that they sealed it up, they go back in the house and the sisters' friends are hiding in the closet because they had declined to come out to the hole with them because they were scared. Um, so they're in the closet. So the 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 kids go back in the house and they open up the closet. And the girls are in there, and they've got, like, candles held up in the shape of crosses, and they're wearing insane amounts of garlic around their neck. And you mentioned, like, why would you have that much garlic in your house? (laughs) You wouldn't. Yeah. Um, And they're all hiding in there. And then the other kids make fun of them for hiding. And I'm like, yeah, you guys are super lame for being afraid of literal demons. Mm -hmm. Because they saw the little demon creature things. Yeah. And they were like, hell no. Right. Because you would be. I mean, I get that they're, sh- they're showing how brave these other kids are to fight back against the mm-hmm. demonic powers that be. But you don't really get to make fun of someone for being afraid of demons. Yeah. Because demons are scary. Also, trigger warning, they say fag a lot in this film. Oh my god. Like three times. Yep. I think it was three times that somebody called somebody a fag in this movie. Just casually kind of yeah just like it wasn't casual one of the times was pretty casual but the first time it happens the kid's like really mad at this other guy yeah he's pissed off at... and he just says fag and storms out of the room and the kid gets up like he's gonna go fight him yeah you're like you're gonna you're gonna be the 11 year old's ass right for calling you a rude name yeah yeah that was kind of unexpected and now that I think about it, because I found out about this movie from watching Red Letter Media's mm-hmm. uh, video where they talk about it, um, and they do say, like, there's the obligatory 80s horror movie uh, homophobic slur. <laughs> um, yeah, I had completely forgotten that that was going to happen, though, and it was really shocking. You're like, oh, oh, people said that. We live in a better time yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I thought it was a fun movie. And yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun, and I think the effects had a lot to do with it. I was gonna say the effects were effective. This movie would not come out today. No. In the form that it's in, even if you took out the 
like homophobic hate speech. <laughs> this this movie was far too disturbing to be released as a, a movie for kids mm-hmm. now. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. Um I think people don't give kids enough credit now. Mm-hmm. And they think that any little thing is going to scare them. And it takes more to scare kids than you think. And weirder things scare kids than you think. Mm -hmm. The things that scare you as an adult are not the same things that scare kids. Yeah. Um, I could imagine if I had seen this movie back in the day. I was going to say when it came out. But it came out in like 87. So I would have been five. I would not have seen this movie when I was five. No. Um, but if I had seen it back when I was the like in the demographic it was shooting for, I probably would have been a little bit freaked out by it. But like I saw Cat's Eye back then. Did you ever see Cat's Eye? Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the end scene of that movie had a really disturbing little monster in it. Um, we should watch that sometime. Mm. Um, that freaked me out too, but like it didn't like devastate me. This movie had some stuff in there that could really fuck with a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, Nightmare fuel. Yeah, there's some definite... Like, with the parents, Mm -hmm. especially. Um, Because your parents, when you're a kid, are, like, one of the only, like, relatively stable things in your life. Yeah. Um, And this undermines that hard. (laughs) Um, But... They would, if they released this movie today, it would have been a lot safer, a lot cleaner, and completely unmemorable. Mm-hmm. Because the story of this movie isn't particularly great. No. The effects were good, um, and that's what it's got. Yep. But, yeah, I also thought it was fun. Yeah. I'm glad that we watched it. Yeah. It's worth, worth checking out. If you haven't seen it, The Gate. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us again, and we'll see you tomorrow. And we still don't know what we're going to watch tomorrow. (laughs) No, maybe we should watch Cat's Eye. No. No, okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.